In today's session of Visual J for X, we will be looking to complete the setup involving the indicator, percent, Bollinger band. This is going to be the third and final part of this series. Let us now get started with the Visual J for X board, which has been developed by the Ducoscopy Bank SA. In the last two sessions, the designing have been done and we have already completed the designing for the execution of the buy trade today it is going to be all about the sell side requirements in the prior sessions this instrument subscription was carried out where the default instrument is usd jpy which is being matched with the last uh, ask candle candle instrument position amount was defined as zero then i got these percent bollinger bands with uh, varying time periods and also the get historical candle blocks for the purpose of looking at the price action prior to the execution of the order to pinpoint the exact entry point these uh, 10 second candles are being used and uh, after that these calculations were carried out to define certain condition that there should be good enough price momentum and uh, for that we are uh, taking into consideration the high and the low form over last four hours and comparing it with the minimum requirement of 20 pips so as and when we have enough for volatility only then the trade will go through and uh, this person bollinger band on the hourly time period was brought in to look at the last hours output value and uh, then we define these conditions using the if blocks I will not go into the details of that. I just wanted to give you the brief refresher. Now we start with uh, designing for the conditions which need to be put in place for the execution of the sale trade. So I will give you a brief refresher regarding the logic behind the execution of the sale trade. We want the underlying instrument to have been in overbought territory and that should have happened six hours back. So we are not going to look for the execution of this trade straight away. Whenever we see that the overbought uh, condition have formed in the underlying instrument. Instead of that, we will be waiting for six hours to have passed since uh, this uh, extreme value has been reached. And only after that, whenever we see that the prices are now starting to again uh, decline we will be looking to execute the trade as you can observe here we will be looking to trade somewhere around 22 gmt and by the time the prices have stabilized of course we get this spike on the higher side but again after that we see this resumption on the lower side so that increases the probability of ending up in profit of course Nothing is like 100%. So even in this case, we might end up in loss. But we are trying to make sure that uh, we are not getting caught in the initial stages of the upper price momentum. Instead of that, we are looking for uh, price action to stabilize. And only then, we will be looking to initiate the trade. So that's how we are going to proceed with this. And uh, once we are satisfied with the hourly price action, we shift our focus to the 15 minutes time period and in 15 minutes we want the output value for the percent volume with band to dip below 50 from above 50 and uh, that will be the time when we will be looking to place the trade provided last 15 minute candle has closed on the lower side and uh, as i said the hourly condition is also in place so that's fairly simple and uh, with this we also look at the price action so whenever we have this cluster of four candles the price action should be good enough there should be enough of price momentum and uh, the difference between the highest and the lowest value should be more than 20 pips so, and uh, uh, one thing which we need to again check with the percent Bollinger band is that last hours percent Bollinger band value should be below 100 and uh, as I said earlier the 6 hours back value should have been above 100 so now we 
get started and here we need to add the blocks and we have to make sure that the setup is symmetric so the number of conditions which we have used for execution of the by trade the equal number of conditions will be used to find the logic for the execution of the cell trade okay we are going to use nine if blocks and after that we will be adding the open at market block so let us bring in nine a blocks in one go I think nine blocks have been added yes most probably we are more used to working in probability rather than being certain about anything that's also true while defining this logic first thing first we want the line 15 to have been above 100 first input greater than second input After that, we turn our attention to the last hours percent Bollinger output and it should be below 100 but uh, it shouldn't have dipped too much. We also want to make sure that it is still above 50. So in this case, first input less than second input and here first input greater than second input all right then we will see if 15 minute percent bollinger requirements are in place or not we want the last 15 minute percent bollinger band output value to be below 50 whereas the penultimate value should be above 50 so as and when we see the price action taking a bearish tone on the 15 minute time frame we will be looking to initiate the trade and uh, for that we have to look at these values it should have been above 50 first input greater than second input and here first input less than 50 Then we will uh, turn our side at the price action and uh, here the difference between the highest and the lowest value for last 4 hours needs to be more than 20 pips. first input greater than second input last 15 minute candle closing should be lower compared to its opening value so we have to look at candle 23rd closing and the opening price candle 23rd is uh, last 15 minute candle yeah 
its closing value needs to be below the opening value and two more if blocks will be used to compare the 10 second candle closings with last 15 minute candle closing value so again we are going to need candle 23rd candle close this closing value should be less so first input less than second input and here we will compare the candle 23rd close value with the candle 24th and candle 25th closing values respectively. Uh, these two blocks have different look back period. One is last 10 second candle and one, another is penultimate 10 second candle. And uh, this candle 25th should have closed on the higher side compared to the candle 23rd candle close. So here yeah, this needs to be first input greater than second input. And after that, this needs to be less. So first input less than second input. And uh, as we are done with defining of the if blocks, we are going to bring in the open at market block for the sell trade or the buy trade. Okay, and in this case, first input less than second input. So, we are now in the final stages of the completion of our algorithm. And I will arrange this in block, and after that, we will define the input parameters for the open at market block We will color code this to make sure that the algorithm iteration flow is going through all the way till the very end. Yes, it is. Now we come to the defining of these uh, input parameters. Default instrument will remain as it is. Trade amount I will change to 0.1 million. Slippage to pips is good enough. If slippage goes beyond two pips, then no trade execution will take place. Here, stop loss, since we are dealing with the hourly time period, I think 15 minutes is good enough. This time around, we are not really working with the dynamic stop loss and take profit. And if you want, you can refer to the videos of earlier. 
algorithm development sessions and uh, we have plenty of examples it will help you with the defining of the stop loss and take profit in a dynamic way and uh, as far as i can see the setup looks symmetric to me nine if else conditions and after that there is a execution block one is for the buy trade another is for the sell trade and uh, with this our uh, algorithm is complete and i hope you have been able to understand the logic behind this uh, algorithm involving the percent volume band and uh, i am hopeful you will be trying to develop it on your own and then i would recommend that you carry out extensive testing on the historical data on j4s platform and uh, there you will get the idea whether the current setup is uh, good enough or not whether it is profitable or not and suppose if you want to carry out any modifications you are always free to do so thank you all for joining in do subscribe to the discussion webinar channel see you next time till then goodbye